The difference is this. I don't think that I don't think that I can push off the ground to create speed and roll my wrist. Okay. Those two activities are kind of hard for me to do athletically. But, but what I can do is I can push off the ground and slap. Or like you say, spank. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching. Today I'm in Duarte, California with an old friend of mine, Lee Dietrich. Hi, Lee. How are you doing? Nice How's it to going? see you. Good to see I you. I haven't seen you in a long, long time. Yeah, about uh, five, five years yeah, ago. about five years. Uh, I was struggling really bad with my game way before I was doing Be Better Golf. And a uh, good friend of mine, Kendall, you guys have seen mm -hmm. on, the, on the channel, like it that. goes to, uh, he's a teacher and he goes to Lee and uh, recommended me. And I did a series of three lessons with Lee. And uh, that was the last I saw you. So uh, It's been a while. But uh, originally, Lee, uh, if anybody searches the name Lee Dietrich Golf on YouTube <laughs> or anywhere else, they see this uh, Tom Tomasello letter to Lee Dietrich. What, what was that about and how did you get involved with the golfing machine people? And, and remind people, who is Tom Tomasello and that whole thing? Well, that's a, what happened was, how, it, how I got with Tommy was, I started off as a wrestler. Yeah. And I was... You still have the ears of well, a wrestler. I still got yeah. the ears of a wrestler. I was a state champion in high school, went to Michigan on a scholarship and won the Big Ten and was an All-American and then wrestled till I was probably about 25. What was your weight? 163. Well, that's the last weight. High wow. college, I was 147. Yeah, wow. And then after college, I wrestled 154 for a year and then 171 and a half and then when they changed the Olympic weights in 1968, I went down to 163, and I actually won the Nationals in freestyle that year. Okay. So my my golf was my summer getaway because we didn't train year round like we do right now, mm -hmm. you know, like like the kids do now. So and I was probably about a three handicap, mm -hmm. and uh, I could shoot. You know, if I had a good day, I would shoot. I could shoot under par, and the, where I would probably range was probably probably a range something like 68 to 70. 75, 76, 77, 78 in that area. Yeah. So what I did is I, when I stopped competing in 1972, I went to a club pro in Cincinnati, Ohio, and I was living in Battle Creek, Michigan. So that's like 360 miles yeah. to drive down there. And that club pro was Jim Flit. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. So I spent about 20 years with Jim, uh -huh. from about 72 up to about 92. And in the, in, in, in the middle of that, what happened with me, I started teaching golf in 1980. Uh -huh. And I was still teaching high school math, so I'm a little yeah. bit on the science, scientific side. That's where I'm coming from. And uh, so, in 1980, you went full time. 1980. Well, I well, I stopped. To, actually, actually, 1980, I started teaching golf as a professional. I played as an amateur up until 1980. Okay, gotcha. And then mm -hmm. I started teaching golf, and I had, was fortunate enough to be able to find a place where I could give lessons in Rialto, California. Mm -hmm. and we lived over there at the time. And. Jim, knowing my interest in coaching, and I was coaching wrestling too, uh, suggested that I get involved with the National Golf Foundation at the time when they had a teaching division. Okay. So I taught with the, with the NGF from about 19, uh, probably 1983, 84 in that time period, I'm not sure, up to about 92 when they kind of went away from the teaching division and went into more research like they are right now. Yeah, yeah. They don't have that anymore. The, the, the guy who was kind of the the guy behind the teaching division was Don Rossi and he passed away sometime in that time period and then they went away from doing those NGF stuff that they used to do. We used to we used to call them poor man's golf digest schools. Okay. So yeah. so with Jim putting me in front of them, I was able to meet gosh a lot of people. I met Dr. Suddy, I met mm -hmm. Mike Hebron, I met all these people. So it was really I really owe what I know to Jim because yeah. he put me in front of these people. Mm -hmm. And did you work at the Jim Flick Jack Nicholas Golf Schools? No, no, oh, okay. no, no. Yeah. What I did is, what I would do at the time when I moved to California in 77, mm -hmm. I would go out to Palm Springs whenever Golf Digest was having a school. Yeah. I'd take a day off of school and take a lesson from Jim during lunch. Okay. And yeah. then come back. So that's how I met the Golf Digest staff. Costas, Toski, um, Chuck Cook. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. that group. Yeah. Bob, you know, Jack Lumpkin, all those people. So I've been really bombarded from both ends from all all over the place with knowledge from what these guys are telling me. So how did you get into the then I guess around that same the time golf, was the the golfing machine. Well what started. happened with the golfing machine in 87 88 swings the thing golf schools 
was doing the golf machine stuff. And I had a friend that I met, um, George Eisenman. Who, did, I, who does the swings, the thing? Somebody brought that was, him up that to was, me. That was Dick Farley, Rick yeah, McCord, yeah, yeah, and Gary yeah. Orbitz. Well, yeah. I went to a school where all three of them were probably the last school that they did yeah. in February of 87. Yeah, Bobby because, Lopez was really good friends with Mr. Farley. Because, yeah. because they were teaching a little bit of the golf machine okay. stuff. Yeah. And my friend took me up to, in 84 up to see Ben Doyle up in, up in Carmel. I took a lesson from Ben Doyle at the time, which was golf machine stuff. So yeah. me with my science and yeah, everything as a math else, background, I was into like, oh, this is yeah, cool. This, yeah. this is cool. Yeah, you know, like that. So I work with that, and then what happened as we go forward? Um, in 1990, I met Kent Brown. Now Kent Brown was a Hogan rep here in California. Okay, for the and equipment. He was, yeah, he was the vice president. He became the vice president of the Professional Golfers Career College, mm -hmm. which is where I teach now since about 2007, after I retired from teaching school. So yeah. Kent was, at the time in 90, on, on Max, on Mac O'Grady's inner circle. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't stay there very long. No, I've heard that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know that. So, so that gave me a little bit of the Morad kind of stuff, the background with Morad. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. And that would golf, <clears throat> the golf, Morad's based in the golfing machine. So we got to there, and then mm -hmm. in 2000, I mean, in 94, I met a guy that had the cover of Golf Digest named Peter Croker from Australia, yeah. which had natural golf, if you remember uh -huh. that. Now he's got the Croker system. The Croker yeah. system. So I spent about 10 years on Peter's, working with Peter from about 94 to, to 2004. Uh -huh. And then, then the, the guys from the golf machine was sold to... A bunch, of, I think, was sold, was sold to Joe Daniels. But a little bit before that, I got involved with Chuck Evans. Yeah. So Chuck Evans did the golf machine schools in that period, probably from somewhere. I'm, I'm not sure about this. Yeah. Somewhere between '95 and 2000. You know, to early 2000. Yeah. Chuck I spent did a the day golf out machine. with, with Chuck you on did. the channel. I did, yeah, you spent it with Chuck. So yeah. that's how I got involved with the. You know, I just got. You know, I, I did that. So what happened, I, I got to know Chuck, and what happened was I retired from teaching school in 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. And my choice was I need, to, I need to do something to get me better prepared to teach. And what, so I did That's why I got authorized in the golfing machine. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. And then the golfing machine was there. And then probably around 2005, 6, 7, the golf machine morphed over with some of the guys that were doing stack and tilt stuff, mm -hmm. uh, Dave Wetzik and Eric Barsetsky. Yeah, and the they, and, people and who they went came on to do in, five simple keys. Right, they came yeah. in and that's the five simple keys mm -hmm. from Medicus. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's me. Okay. So I'm not locked into, I, right. I guess I'm really not, not locked in too often to one way to get it done. Yeah, but you are on kind of like a certain section of the branches yeah, of the yeah, tree. I'm over there. So take us back a little bit to how did this this video come about that Tom Tomasello made for you, and who is Tom Tomasello? Tom figure? Tomasello, there were there were two guys that in the U.S. that were really really into the golfing machine. Uh -huh. That Whenever were actually Bobby there Clinton. with Homer Kelly. Um, they in, had they had Washington. been with Homer. Okay. Now, they weren't done. Tom Tomasello was on the East Coast. Yeah. Uh, ben Doyle was on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Thomas yeah. Tomasella was in South Carolina. Ben Doyle was up in, up in Carmel. Uh -huh. And and if you went to look at them, if you listen to them, what that they were doing, they were like on two different planets. I mean, they were like Venus and Mars. Yeah, know? yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. this. They were just two different planets with what they were doing. And I had sent. The, how I got with Tom, is there was a guy back in the late '80s, no, early '80s, named Bill Corder, who made a thing like what Wedbetter. Ledbetter had, which would go around your chest and lock your arms to connect you to your body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that suggested Tom Tomasello to me. I happened to okay. get in touch with him and yeah. you know got his, his swing trainer like this. And what I did is I sent Tom my swing. Yeah. And and uh -huh. and and he sent me back some notes. But what uh -huh. I did when I and I gave those tapes because Lynn Blake was Lynn Blake was in this group around the early 2000s that was golfing machine da, 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 uh -huh. like that, with Chuck Evans and with yep. Randy Sparks, who's now at, in Dustin, Florida. And I sent, I sent my video to, to, I sent a video of me swinging to Tommy and asked him for some advice. So that's what he sent back to me. Now, when I gave wow. the tapes to Lynn, I didn't put my swing on there. Okay. I just gave him right. what he, just, yeah. just gave him what he said uh -huh. back to me. Which was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. It's funny you say that. I've had two people that I've actually worked with 
that have found me through Tom Tomasello through those videos online. Yeah, they're popular on GolfWorks and stuff, but uh, as far as like him telling you is, is almost like his legacy now. Really? Oh, really? No, I, didn't say, I, didn't well, I mean, because that. that's the best video. It's the best video of him talking. I know he, used, he died on stage, and I know that he used to give talks, but I don't think there's very much good there's video. There's a video, that. there's another video out there, if you go looking for it, where he is in Australia with Peter Croker. Oh, okay. See, the reason I went with, the reason I spent some time with Peter and got involved with what Peter was doing, because someplace in the Golf Week magazine around 1994, they mentioned that Peter Croker was in the U.S. teaching a course and he worked with he was working with Tom Tomasello and Paul Runyon. Uh -huh. Now I worked with both of those people. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I went to went to see Peter stuff. There is a video, there are videos out there and I don't know where they are that have what Tomasello did in Australia. Oh, videos oh, of his time of in his Australia. Of his time in Australia. There's five or six videos out there. Well, if oh, anybody knows, things. put it in the comments and, yeah, and we'll try to I, dig those up. That would be really I interesting. Have I, you know, I, I remember watching some of them, and uh -huh. I may have them at home, but I'm not, I, I'd have to go look and see. Yeah. But, but, but you've got this, you've got Peter Croker's walking toward the camera. He's got this hat like Hogan would wear. Yep. You know, you know the mm -hmm. little yeah, sporty cap. That's his look. Yeah. That's his look. Yeah. And, and, and those, there's, there's things, there's maybe five or six different, well, it's more than that. There's about seven or eight different videotapes, mm -hmm. videotapes that were there of Peter, of Tommy Tomasello talking with Peter when Peter's filming yeah. in Australia. So there's another bunch of tapes out there, which other than mine, that'd be and cool. I'm surprised. I'm, I'm glad to hear mine are helping people. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. Well, all right. So you, you've been through, originally started with the Jim, uh, Jim Flick, and then you've been through Croker and Golfing Machine and Five Simple Keys and yeah. a lot of different things. Um, now in 2017, almost 18, what are like, what do you know now that's different than, from, than from, kind of... From when I was in those groups. Yeah, uh-huh. Well, I think what's happened in the last 17, maybe 2000, eh, probably 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, in that area yeah. since we've changed. And number one, we are much more able to look at what the body's doing, uh -huh. which is to pivot. Mm -hmm. they, they, have, they have force plates, they have gears, they have K-Vest. My swing. They have all yeah. those things, my swing. All those things are there that can tell us what the body's doing in the golf swing. And like we were talking just before we started this, there's a difference in what they would do. I mean, I think, I th I think the swings now are much more centered. The head's not moving off the planet. Mm -hmm. The heads are more centered, yeah. you know, that way. They're not moving back where they went. Like you and I were going, I was growing up, I would have said that I want to have my, my shoulder line over, the, over my right foot, and my head's over my right foot, and then I would move back the other way. And now they're more, like what Mac would do, you'd have the, Mac would put a, would put a shaft in the center of your stance and you want to have your, you want to have your shoulders in the center of your stance like that. Yeah. So it's much more centered, mm -hmm. much yeah. more centered. Mm -hmm. I think, I think what's happened is there's a difference in. Other than look, is being more centered, is there any benefit to that? Well, yeah, because you're not moving off the ball. I mean, I think the. If you don't I, move off, you don't have to move well, back. Well, you don't have to move back. So yeah. all of a sudden now you should be able to get better contact with the golf ball. Okay. And that's a, that if it, some people don't like stack and tilt, I think that. Well, that's one of the things that stuck I, around from well, stack and tilt Well, that's one of the things bit. that's there because yeah. you don't want to, you want to, the, the difference between us and a tour player or us and an average player is our ability to strike the ball at the same place all the time. Mm -hmm. That's important. Whether to strike you like the ball or, or to strike the I'm, ground. I'm sorry, strike the ground at the same place You're all right, the time. Right, right, yeah. And what happens with that is that. If you start moving here and going back, you got too much movement and you lose that solid contact with the, with okay. the ball first, ground second. You lose that. Yeah. You lose that. I think that that's one thing that I think is really different now than it was five, ten, five years ago, let's say. And they're learning more all the time because yeah. now they got, you've got a couple guys named Brian Manzella and Michael Jacobs mm -hmm. that are going back and they use gears, but then Michael has a, Michael has a Jacobs 3D yeah. that's there, mm -hmm. and they're just about ready probably in October or soon to come out with Jacobs 3D mm -hmm. for the pivot. And they've already done it for what the arms are doing, right? you know, for the arms and the, what the club is doing, but they, now they're going to come back with the, with, with the pivot. So there's, there's all kinds of stuff going on. I and mean, the other big difference in the last, I don't know, maybe, maybe five or, or seven years is you don't see as much rolling and unrolling, do you? I'll give you my take on that. That's yeah. the other thing I think is really different. I think, I, th I think what's happened is, 
Well, it goes like this. So I remember in 87 when I was working with Jim, I went to see him in Palm Springs and I said, Jim, I got just way too much curve on my golf ball. Yeah. And, he, and I remember like it was yesterday. He said, well, I had it right going back that the face had to be square to the arc when he did square to square. Mm -hmm. So you have to go back and find out what that is. But yeah. basically, it's not fan and open like this, but the face is staying square to the arc. Right. Okay. But I didn't have it per se as well as I needed to have over here. So I'm coming So going like, back, you were like this. Well, no, 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 no. I wasn't like that. Well, let's do, well, let's, which way is the best way to see it? Just down the line, I think. Yeah. This way or this way? That okay. way, yeah. Okay. In square to square, he kept the face looking like this. And maybe sometimes they would roll it under so it was that way. But basically what had happened is they were not letting the f face fan open. Right, right. So the club would come back, what I would say, square the arc or I'm mm -hmm. keeping if, if there's an if there's a mirror on the club face I've got the ball still in the mirror I'm not yeah. turning it away from the mirror yeah so I had it right going here he said but when I came down through the ball I was still doing too much of this which is leaving me too much curve yeah. I needed to have the face square to the arc as I went through this way so same thing where like if there's a mirror on the back of this you would, it would look keep that it way or yeah. I'm perpendicular to the swing arc as I come back right I'm going to yeah. come down like this and work my way I'm coming from the inside mm -hmm. I go to what I call low point, and then I come back up this way. Yeah. Okay. Um, the interesting thing is that, so, so what happened is you've got Jim Hardy has the book, one plane, two plane, and stuff uh -huh. like that. And what Hardy did, yeah, this is easier to can see more. What Hardy did was he had two different, two different patterns. He has a left pull and a right throw. And that's, okay. that's not how he defined it, but that's just what he's doing. Yeah. And with the left pull, what happens is the club comes down a little bit higher. Yeah. It comes, you know, it's higher than where you started. Like I might have started, I'm not sure I can do this because this ground, hold this a minute, yep. is really firm. But I'm going to say I'm here, and then that would put me here. And let's say we go up here. Okay, so yeah. here's, here's what Hardy did with his two things. They would start here in the, in the, in the left arm pull. Yeah. They would take it back, and when they come down, the hands were higher, and they'd come back up on this plane. Yeah. And then in order to do that, they would get right here, and now because, because my hands are further away from me, uh -huh. this is one of the things I said to you when we talked the other day, because my hands are further away, this forearm's pointing out there. Okay. Outside the ball yeah okay so they're going to come through here i can't just turn my body or i'm going to miss the ball when i go here if i'm coming you're, yeah, in you'll here, swing on this side of it i'm yeah. going to be, i'm going to come up there so what i have to do is i have to kind of uncock my wrists and roll my wrists to go through this way to get back up on the thing on the swing that way and was that a golfing machine term uncock and roll i remember hearing that well, a lot uncock and roll is the sequencing that the golf machine talks about you're not yeah. going to you're not you're not going to Roll and uncock. The sequence has to be uncocking here, then rolling. Oh, okay, it got out. you, got you. That's, yeah. like that's don't what that don't was. roll right. and then try to uncock. So, so what you've got here is a is a is a is a release pattern in the club head that's going like this. Mm -hmm. And that's how I grew up playing. We yeah. became good centrifugal force mechanics. Yeah. All of Paul Berthley, because I worked with Paul too, mm -hmm. and that's what we would we would practice doing this. Yeah. If I wanted to hit a hook off the tee, I'd pose this over here. Yeah. A strong hook like Conrad Railing would say yeah. and then I would swing and try to let the club go that way. People talk about it like a tennis feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So here. Now then the other one, the other pattern looks something like this. The more one plane pattern? Yeah. Well it's not, it's a, it's a one plane pattern. Oh I'm sorry, the in, more right arm pattern. It's a right arm throw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What happens here is I go back and this goes to here. I get up to the top. Yeah. Now when I come down, I'm coming back. So now I'm back on this my, my lie angle plane, let's uh -huh. say, uh -huh. okay? And now as I go through here, because I don't, because I'm here, if I'm out here, I, I, I can't rotate, I'm above the ball. Yeah. But if I'm back in here, and I come back down where I'm lower, now I can rotate and catch the ball and go back over here, so I end up more on this plane. When you say rotate, you mean rotate the shaft or rotate your body? Rotate your body. Rotate your body, So, okay. so what I'm saying here would kind of be this if I'm here. So if I come back to here and I come down high, I can't just rotate because I'm gonna be above the ball. So yeah. there has to be something to get down to ball level 
to go through. Hand action. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Whereas if I'm in closer, instead of being up here, I'm down where my forearm is kind of coming back to this lie angle plane. Yeah. Or it may be the, we'll talk about that in a minute, but it may be the more the elbow plane okay. in the golf machine. Now when I rotate, I can catch the ball and I come through back over here. Yeah, and you're seeing that in the modern golfers on tour, That's you're seeing that a lot more. You're going to see more of that than you're going to see this. And you see, you were telling me, you see kind of the right elbow lower than the left. Yeah, well, right I'm not, forearm lower than one the of them is here, one of them is down here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, like I, you know, if I get myself working down on this left arm plane, then, then I'm not going to hit the ball if I just rotate. I have to do something to get the club back down to the ball, in my opinion. So, so rather than like a rolling release through the ball, it feels when you're a little lower it feels like you can get this yeah, i call like it a, a spanking you call it a spank call it a i call slap. it a slap yeah like it's like, a, it's a, like hockey a hockey would... it's like a hockey slap shot so here's what's happened so so here's what's happened yeah. i can remember chuck telling me that i the the really chuck good Evans. players they're really good players if i can set this in here what they'll do this didn't come out very well okay i'm right here yeah the real good players will be on plane here, they go here, they go over to here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're gonna be on plane on both sides of the yeah. ball. I mean, my, my entry into impact is gonna match my right. exit out of impact. Is will they okay? be, not to, not to derail you, but will they be that toe up or will the good players no, be, be more like that? Like that? Okay, it more depends like that. upon where they are. Okay. I and mean, that's something you would do as a, that's something I would have to do as an instructor. Oh, yeah. You know, if I get like this and I gotta rotate, I can't, right. If I get like this, I got to rotate because right. if I don't, if, if if I don't close the face down, my ball's going off to right field. And if yeah. I get like this, you just squish it. Yeah. You know, it's just the opposite. I don't yeah. have to rotate as much. But if I do rotate, now the ball's going left. Mm -hmm. If you do twist. Over. If yeah, I right. over rotate. Yeah, yeah. This. Yeah. But you can rotate your body freely. Yeah. 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 And so my, and my so what were you saying that that Chuck said? Re what okay, really? Okay. Well, what Chuck do? said was this. I was here. I would come down to here and I was always a little bit above the plane here. Now, the more I get above this plane on this side, the more I got to rotate that to bring my ball back. Mm -hmm. If I don't rotate, I hit a push. And that was my miss. I, I, my miss was a push shot. Yeah, solid. Solid, push, but yeah. just over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that if I come down here and I, I go into impact and I turn my body out of the way, then all of a sudden I'm back on this plane and I'm more even on both sides. Yeah. Now, we know, we know this. The average for a tour player from address to impact is up about five degrees, five, six degrees. They're, yeah. they're going to raise up. So that's yeah. why I say this is my, what I would call the shaft plane if we were drawing a line on it. Yeah. Where they are, at Im their impact plane is more an elbow plane. Where that I would draw through my, the lower part of my yeah. elbow right here. It would be a little bit higher. It would be about like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now we go, two guys didn't do that. One of them was Hogan. Mm -hmm. He went up only one degree. Yeah. And the other one was Mo Norman. Mm -hmm. He came down one degree. Yeah. So they were the two that were closest to being the, at the at the same level on both sides of their body. And that's yeah. the difference. I mean, I think. Yeah, the premier ball strikers of history. Yes, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So I think what's happened with me, and it's happened with me particularly, probably in the last ten years as I've been working on this motion, yeah. is that I'm going to get to here. The club is coming down in this area. And I, I'm more concerned about the club head moving from inside, from inside to what I call low point, which is where the left shoulder is, mm -hmm. to back to inside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rather than going from here, and the more I take my hands up, the more this has to rotate to balance those things off. Well, you talk about tour pros are coming from from impact. I'm sorry, from address to impact. They're coming up five degrees. A little bit. A little. Now, bit, just yeah. a little. Now, the average golfer, even like a five handicap, but they're coming up a lot because yeah, you see that a lot. To, they're trying to get it up here. You and see them move. at an address here and then an impact like that. Yeah. So what's a good, if somebody's seeing themselves on video and their hands are coming so high up and they would like to get their hands a little closer and more of a slap shot, mm -hmm. what's, a, what's a good fix for that? Well, I would drill? do this. I mean, first off, first off, you got to change your concept. Okay. Okay. okay? The reason this tour, the average player is up like this, in my opinion, is because they're trying to, the club head's coming from inside to low point. Yeah. And what they're doing is the hand, they're, they're matching them. They're matching the hands, the hand path to the club head path. Okay. To yeah. where the club head's going this way, going here like this, going yeah. here like this, going this way. Yeah. You see, and so you, you, you run into having to get here where you could, you could shank it, 
you could you have to do like this to square it. Yeah, they're they're the, running their hands out to yeah. be on with the same yeah. as the club head. They're yeah. matching, and it's not really concentric, but they're matching the they're matching the hand path with the club head path with the, with the with the club head pass going like this yeah. out towards low point, let's say where it stops, and the hand path is going in the same direction. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. Yes. So mm -hmm. that's not what happens. And yeah. you got to credit, I have to credit Michael Jacobs and Brian Mansella because they, they, they have a book. Jacobs has a book out that's. They're making these 3D that, models that really show. Well, not you know. 3D models, they, they, they did gears. Okay. They did some gear stuff. What they found out was, and, and Michael and, Michael and um, Brian were both golf machine guys. Yeah. They're both golf machine guys. So instead of feeling, the club head and the hand path are going to the same point where they have the same low point. Mm -hmm. So the low point of the hands is here and the low point of the club head's down there. Yeah. Instead of having that be the same and coming back like this, what they found out was this. When they put these guys on film, it was like they were hitting a hockey slap shot. Okay. Which is what you and I have talked about. Yeah. The average player, let's say I choke the club down here. Uh -huh. So what I want to do is I want to watch what's happening here, the mm -hmm. club head. The club head's going down to the ball. The handle is not going down to the ball. The handle's moving in and up. Can you show us that in, in a face on, like, like this way, Lee? Well, okay, well, let me just, let me say okay. it two ways. Yeah. The low point of the hands, yeah. they've determined, is somewhere in front of the right thigh. The lowest point that the, the hands, hands get there, and then is, they start raising. Well, yeah, so, so here's what happens. If I'm here, this is my lowest, well, if I'm gonna do lowest point, I'm gonna go this way. So the yeah. lowest point, this is the lowest point the hands get mm -hmm. yeah. and the furthest out the hands get. So if I put this here, that'll be the lowest point of your hand. Yeah, and now so what's happening from here now is this. As the club head goes down to the ball, look where the handle's going. Higher and It's higher. coming up and up and up and up like this. Now, when I first started doing this, I felt it in my hands, but in reality, the cause of that is the pivot. Yeah. Because when I'm at impact, I'm moving my body up this way, so what's happening is the handle's moving, moving inward, and this is the crack the whip feel that you get as you go through. Mm -hmm. Now, if uh -huh. I do it, so that was the up dimension. Yep. Mm -hmm. If I do it from down the line, what'll happen is you'll see this isn't moving out like that. Yeah, yeah. What's doing is it's moving inward, like I'm gonna hit myself in, the, in my thigh, and most of this knowledge came from those guys, from, yeah. Michael, from Michael and from Brian. They're going here. You see where the handle's going? Yep. It's going around my body, and I'm coming up here, and now I'm up through the finish. And everybody who's trying to get more speed, and not everybody, but a lot of the people watching YouTube trying to get more speed are desperately trying to hold this angle, yeah. and yeah. They, they think that there's going to be some flash speed right there. And I think, and, and right. But you're, right. Saying, you're saying, let it out. No, like, you've got to let it out, because yeah. I want to get... I want to feel, and we talked about this on, over the phone. You talk, you asked me about the club going left after impact, and I'm I'm not too wild about the club going left after impact. I think the yeah. club goes left after low point. Okay. So low point is where my right is. I, I stop moving out when I'm going like this, yep. where my left shoulder at, at my left shoulder. So if I'm going to get down into here, this is going out to my right, going out to my left shoulder. So I when I first did this, I'm going to hold it this way so I don't hit my well. As I'm here, this goes this way. I mean, I'm bringing the club toward the ball. My hands are moving inward and upward because that's where my left shoulder's going mm -hmm. and that's where my left hip is going. So yeah. now I'm using the ground mm -hmm. to push up, which is gonna give people more speed. Yeah. And, I'm, and, and the club is coming this way. And you've got, I mean, I would, I, I would give credit to Andrew Rice for this drill because Andrew Rice was talking about, let's watch I only think about the club head going to the ball now. I don't worry about my hands doing this. Yeah. And I, do it, I started doing it with my chipping because I would be the first to admit that I taught most people to go here, Line it there, up. and let it go out like this. Yeah. And that's off plane. Yeah, uh, a lot of golfing machine instructors, if you go to them, they'll have you hit a 50 yard pitch like for yeah, an hour and a half. It's, it's by like going this, up in like here. Up high. Yeah. And see, I think that, that this, is, this is an extension. I think what you want to do is you want to be close to vertical at low point, if you will. I may have a little bit of bend here. I don't need to have a massive amount of this. I'm trying to hit a certain kind of shot and knock okay. it down a little bit. All right. But I want to get it square at low point. I think if I could stop the phase, stop it at low point, here the club head is behind the handle. 
it, now it's vertical. I'm like I'm pulling the grip off the golf club, and yeah. I go over to here, and now the club hits ahead of the handle. Yeah. Now, if my body stops, then I get break. Mm -hmm. But if my body keeps moving, yeah. and the difference that you and I see is this: look, when I was growing up, we would see the finish of a good player like that. And now we see the finish of a good player more that way. Show me the differences. It's there. Oh, there. yeah, like you're talking about where your watch is. Show where people Where the watch that. is, this yeah. way and this way. Okay. I used to wear my watch when I worked with Jim like this. Uh huh. So I could, every time I told what time it was, I was doing the roll. <laughs> That's you're how right. I, would, I would do Instead that motion. Of... And now I would put it over here, Yeah. and it's going to go this way. And if you watch guys like Foley or he's the one that comes to mind when I first saw it, he's... He's like this. It's not turning down here because... Show us the difference in slow motion because I'm not, I'm not catching okay. it. Yeah. Okay, here's the watch. Yep. I'm coming back to impact there. Yeah. I'm not so sure I wasn't the same at impact. Okay. But past the impact with the watch on the inside, this would roll up like that. And, you and my face it. would look that way. Yep. Uh -huh. so, so your face is going this more way. The, yeah. More that way. Uh -huh. Whereas when you watch, what I see the guys right now is they go here. In fact, I just watched something with Tiger this morning online. I go to here, they're like this. Because yeah. they're square to the arc. Yeah. And now I'm getting this action. So, so an extreme of that, if I can see this, an extreme of that would be, uh, of here, what people used to do, would be here and yeah. like that. Yeah. And Strong you saw point. that yeah. before a lot. And they were staying back a lot. And now they're more here where, like you said, it's kind of it's facing the like arm. So now, this is modern and this is before. Yeah. Okay. And I think the reason, the reason, in my opinion, I tell somebody, why was it like this before? Because they're playing with hickory. And the and instruction came so from torque. the history, no, no. hickory days. They had so yeah. much torque. Yeah. I could turn this and I can twist this this way. You can see that torque. Mm -hmm. And they had to do that the other way to, to get the face back to square. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the club is coming down and the toe is going this way. So they had to do that uh -huh. to square the club, yeah. to, to square up the golf club. One thing that you said that I just want to um, get a little clearer is something that Malaska told me out at Superstition Mountain is that so the hands and club aren't in a line the club is actually on its the club head is on its own plane and the hands are on its own plane what i'm saying is you're not trying to get them in line like this the the hands are in and the club is out a little like they're both on their own well, independent planes like he talks about it being a tool and you know he he's got this move he has but it is two independent well, I, things I, i'll do it this way stand over there yeah this is this is this is what i think i told you i'm going to have this is my target line. Here's my toe stance line. Okay? In my ideal world, if you will, when I'm going to teach somebody, I went to club here. Mm -hmm. I go back to the top. Okay, now whatever this angle is right here, basically is pretty close to what the angle is going to be at impact. Okay. The, if I do a line on there, say it's 57 degrees, or whatever the case may be. Uh -huh. Okay, now if I go like this, yeah. then I got to move it back to get to that line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm what I'm going to feel is I would like to feel like this points to the points to the base of the plane or the gutter as I call it because the plane is like a roof. Yeah. I want to get the club back to here. Yeah. Now, in the past, I would have brought it down so it's toe up. Now, most people think that position right there is is square, but it's really open. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Because I'm using my spine if this, angle. If this is the arc. Well, here, just put that on my that. spine. Stand over there and put uh -huh. it on my angle. See that right there is, that would be my that would be square. Yeah. So if I take this back, that's really square. Square to this. Square to this. If I open yeah. this up, now, now it's I'm open. open. To this. Yeah. Now I got to do something to close it. Yep. Okay. See. So if I come back into this position right here, mm -hmm. I that's like I that's what I said to you. I want you to feel like you're right. You're at this. You're at what we call a six or six p six yeah. or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, with the with, with the shaft, so I could drop it, it would land on the toe stance yep. line, and it's parallel with the toe a little bit that way, because now I can work my body through there. Yeah. I don't need to work my hands a lot to close mm -hmm. the face up. Okay. And most of this stuff, most of this stuff is out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got different guys saying different things, da, 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 but I think if you want to teach, I'm not the same as I was a year ago. Yeah. Because but, now, because that is coming out. Uh -huh. Now, that may not be the best thing for me to play well, because yep. I'm, I'm always tinkering a little bit. Yep. That, that, would, that would be my operation going on, yeah. my normal operation. 
But I think what you're doing is you're learning how to, how to handle different things. I don't think we come in and go here and whip this like that. Yeah. I think we come here and, we, and we're pushing. We're not, we're not driving our legs like we used to. Yeah. We're extending upward. Okay. Uh -huh. To use to, to, to do uh -huh. ground reaction forces. Yeah. This this is the this is what I tell the kids at the college as I do this. If I take this up here this way and let it fall, uh -huh. it falls at a certain speed. Yeah. If I let it fall and jerk it up, it goes faster. Mm -hmm. That's how the guys are hitting it farther. Okay. They're yeah. not they're not driving their legs laterally sideways like I grew up learning how to do. They're letting the club. Now, if you pull that up, well, turn it this way. Here, you come, you come over here. Okay. You do it. Here, yeah, you need some weight on the head. Put it now. Put right there. Turn your hand. Put your thumb down. Right thumb. Gotcha. Now, you. let it fall. That's your speed. Yeah. Okay. That's gravity. Uh huh. Now, That'll be the same every time. Yeah. yeah. Now, hmm. now, as you go down, jerk it up. Yeah. See, quicker. it speeds up. Now, if I pull up too fast is not going to do no, it. No, no. I mean, do, do I have to start pulling up like I think Manzella said once once the toe once it's low goes lower than itself well, it's that's when like you start once pulling the left up. Arm, it's almost like once the left arm gets to five and our numbers from, from yep so this numbers, is five uh -huh. now you're going to let it go now it's going to start to fall and and what I mm -hmm. say yeah but once I mean, once number one, uh, then after six is that when you start no actually after about at this point now, you were saying. Okay, now yeah. you're getting into different. Yeah, right. Okay, but the thing about it is what, what I would do, and you see Joseph Mayo doing this, and you see Andrew Rice doing this, they're putting the club in the ground right here, mm -hmm. and what they're doing is they're coming up like that. This is their motion. They're going here. The well, what they're doing is this. Yeah. Is, is they're not, they don't want you to feel like you're going to go this way. No. They want, you to, they want you to have a more shallow angle of attack and pull the club back up. So I'm yeah. kind of putting the club on the ground. And when I'm going here, I'm pushing up off the ground like I'm going to jump. So show us this as air. a drill like that a drill would people, people would do. Is this That's a field the, that... It's just like that. Yeah. I mean, what they would do would be here. Mm -hmm. They got the club on the ground. And as they're going here, they're, they're kind of pushing up off of this leg. Yeah. They're pushing up off of both legs. As this goes up, then the club comes through that way. So sh show me if this is right. So it's here, like kind of on, on your back yeah, a angle? a little bit further back, about 18 inches back like this. Mm -hmm. Now just now pull yourself through. There's your motion. So now uh -huh. you've done what you want. You've gotten your weight forward. Mm -hmm. Rest, weight's on this foot. Yeah. You've extended your body as you're going up. So basically what you're doing is where most people are trying to go, and again, this goes back to what I said to you, how they do it first. The, the concept is this. I'm not taking the club head and the hands down. Yeah. I'm taking the club head down and letting the hands go in and up. So one of them uh, is going yeah. this way and the other one's coming like this. Yeah, you see a lot of amateurs, they're here and every everything's going down. Yeah, because, because yeah. right, exactly. Yeah. The club has got to go uh -huh. down. If I'm coming here, as I'm going through the ball, as I'm down in this area, this is going to move down. But what's happening is my handle's moving up in the air as I go down. And, and what they've shown, there's a couple videos. There's one by Sasha McKenzie. I'll send you this so you uh -huh. have it. Mm -hmm. That talks about the fact that when I get here with the club, and instead of having this being more circular at the bottom, yeah. that when I pull up on this handle, it actually gets more level. It actually isn't as circular like this. It actually the levels off a little bit and yeah. go back up. Mm -hmm. So there again, now we're back into Phil Rogers' flat spot from yeah. years and years ago, mm -hmm. which you remember. Yeah, that, and was that in short game or in everything? It was in everything. Okay. He was talking about that with everything. One question I had for Sasha when I interviewed him that I have for you. Sasha McKenzie? Me, I interviewed him on, on Skype. And uh, one question I had for him was that, okay, well, that happens, but that is happening so fast. From a motor control perspective, can you, what can you do in that, in that fastness of a flash of a second? You know, can you actually control what's going on when it's, when it's that late? Because well, if you if you give yourself any instruction to do something at this point, well, that instruction it's has over. to happen yeah. up here further. It has to be an intention that it you have up here. It has to be something you have as you're starting down. So what what I was going to say was this. Yeah. I don't think the difference is this. I don't think that I don't think that I can push off the ground to create speed and roll my wrist. Okay. Those two activities are kind of hard for me to do athletics together. But, but what yeah. I can do is I can push off the ground and slap mm -hmm. 
or like you say, spank. Yeah. Which is, I think, what's happening. So what happens with this is this. These wrists So I are can't push off and roll. You, exactly. That'll shank it, probably. Well, no, or it'll, it'll, it'll going give you a quick out, right? hook. It gets you going out or, that yeah, way. So, like a duck so hook. the yeah. most important thing, probably in terms of the average player with this, how we're doing this with everything like that, is this is the club head is the only thing that's going to the ball. Mm -hmm. And if I think of the club head going to the ball, look where the handle's going. It is not moving concentrically. It's moving inward and upward. And that's why I said to you on the before, if I get this too much out here, I can still do that and get it to go that way. My preference would be to have the form pointing toward somewhere in the vicinity of the, just a mm -hmm. little bit inside the, the target line, which I call the gutter. Because for me, my plain images for people are, this is a roof, and then where, mm -hmm. the, where the, the baseline of the plane, which would be where the hosel is, is the gutter of the roof. Yep. So mm -hmm. I'm, I got roof and gutter. Those yep. are the words I use with yeah. people. Yeah. I use that way. Mm -hmm. But I think what you're, and you don't want to raise the handle off the, the top well, of the shingles. I mean, you want when it to, I, it's to stay on there. More. Yeah, I mean, I, it's what happens is this wrist is kind of levelish here. You cock it when you come back to here. You want to have it more level, uh -huh. and then it can come back this way. Yeah. And if I if I come back here and I uncock it and raise it up, now the face is going to go into right yeah. field because you know if you put the ball on the toe, the ball face is going to right field. Yep. So I got to go like this to square it back up again. That's why I have to turn the face down to close it a little bit. Okay. Okay, guys, if you have any questions for Lee, because he's in the area, and uh, he'll be looking at the comments below, I'm sure, I'm sure he'll go through and answer any questions you guys have down there. Stay tuned, because on the next video, we're going to get into the sequence. And as far as a lot of golfers, myself included, from the top, love to just get that shoulder open and get jumping this way. And we're going to get into to Lee's keys about how to address that a little bit.